This year marks the worst drought America has seen in decades, and it's showing no signs of letting up. Over half the country has been affected, with the brunt bearing down on the mid and southwest, especially Nebraska, Kansas, the Dakotas, and parts of the south. Just look at that. Well, in one hard-hit area of Texas, some people have grown tired of waiting for Mother Nature to bring relief and have decided to try and take matters into their own hands. Here's ABC's Juju Chang. Craig Funky is flying me to the edge of a violent thunderstorm. You see how nice and crisp the top of that cloud is up there? Yeah. So. But the former commercial pilot isn't some adrenaline junkie courting danger. He's a cloud seeder, chasing this menacing storm to squeeze out extra rain for the drought-stricken farmland below. As a pilot going through school, you're taught to avoid thunderstorms. This is Craig's job, firing chemicals into the clouds in a controversial attempt to modify the weather. He's literally a rainmaker. That dark, thick cloud over there has lots of moisture in it. That's part of the cloud that was seeded. It actually looks heavy with rain. Cloud seeding has been used around the world for decades. But it's now getting a closer look as farmers desperate for solutions endure their fourth month of record-shattering drought with no end in sight. It's actually the largest drought in half a century, responsible for rising food prices and record wildfires. It's even suspected to be a cause for the recent surge in cases of West Nile virus. So we came to South Texas to find out if cloud seeding can really maximize our most precious resource, or if it's just a romantic notion that doesn't hold water. We can't manufacture a cloud. That is just absolute basic. We, we cannot make it rain if it was not going to rain to begin with. Tommy Shearer is president of the Texas Weather Modification Association. He's quick to explain that he can only enhance the weather, not create it. If you look at the cloud as a factory, we're inducing a lot of raw material into the factory so that the factory becomes more efficient. And more productive. Consequently more productive. Right. His team of pilots and meteorologists are constantly scanning the skies for the right clouds to see. Well, everybody's going to get some good rain. After yeah, 10 bone-dry days, a promising cluster of thunderstorms is finally headed their way. Butch is today's standby pilot. He takes the first run. Up in the air, we get a bird's eye view of Butch's delicate dance. He's just working the very edge of it. And then Butch finds the cloud sweet spot. Okay, he's fixing the light of flare. Okay. Oh, I see the yeah, flare. Right. Yeah. It looks like he's uh, painting the sky. The flares are shooting millions of silver iodide and calcium chloride particles into the cloud, where they collide with drops of water and ice and produce even more moisture. Then, usually within 20 minutes... So what is this white, smoky stuff over here? That's rain. Oh, that's rain? Yeah, that's rain. <laughs> All this is rain out here. Turn 7 on November, turn left face. If you go out, you seed for a few hours or all day long and really know you did some good. It's a good feeling. The radar data collected today adds to a growing body of evidence that cloud seeding works. It can double the amount of moisture in a given cloud, and the Texas programs boast a 12% increase in annual rainfall, thanks to seeding. And long-term studies show those chemicals are environmentally safe and can't even be detected in the rainfall. But despite all the data, some of cloud seeding's biggest critics are surprisingly the very farmers who stand to benefit most. And this isn't the first drought we've been through, and it won't be the last. Bill Slumchinski's family has been farming this land for five generations. He and his son Brett tell us it's expensive to irrigate 300 acres of crops. All that watering cuts deeply into profits, but they are skeptical that anything short of divine intervention can actually make more rain. What do you make of the cloud seeding program? Well, when you've been in a drought since 96 and we've had one wet year, is it working? We can't stop droughts, we can't break droughts. Uh, we just try and put a little more water on the ground. And every drop of water, Craig explains, helps feed the underground aquifer used to irrigate crops. So though he can't promise Bill and Brett more rainy days, he's convinced cloud seeding is helping them in the long run. The local water districts that manage the aquifers believes it's working too. They pay four cents an acre to keep Craig and his team up and running. Because we want people to understand we're not making promises we can't keep and we're not making claims that we do not do. 
Tommy Shearer brushes off critics who say he's playing God. His ideas may be bold, but he says he never loses sight of who's really in charge. You're not going to beat Mother Nature. Let's just understand that right off. We work with Mother Nature. We try to help Mother Nature. Pick your battles. I wouldn't even fight my own mother. For Nightline, I'm Juju Chang. There's a lot of rain going on out there. Over Pleasanton, Texas.